Starship SpaceX's Mars-bound rocket is set to receive a huge update as the Raptor engine's getting a remodel and that promises to bring monumental revolution. In fact, it's a big boost to power to become the world's most powerful engine ever built. That's right, SpaceX does shock the whole rocket industry with the new Raptor 3. How does the Raptor 3 stack up against other engines and how will this enhancement impact SpaceX's future? We're going to find out everything right now in this episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk had goals set for Mars since the company's conception in 2002, initiating a stepwise process, beginning with uncrewed flights of the small Falcon 1 before upgrading to commercial missions with the larger Falcon 9, followed by crewed flights to near-Earth space and heavy lift missions of the Falcon Heavy, including a precursor missions to Mars. Achieving this ambitious goal requires a massive launch vehicle with a cluster of high-powered engines, a propulsion system for operating in deep space, and a propulsive landing and ascent architecture for operation in the Martian atmosphere. All of this will be realized by none other than the SpaceX Raptor engine family. Constructed from SpaceX's proprietary SX500 alloy with copper, aluminum, and steel alloys, the Raptor engine is a full-flow stage combustion cycle engine that runs on liquid oxygen and liquid methane, both of which, while in a cryogenic state, will power the SpaceX's next-generation vehicle, the Starship. The Raptor engine itself benefits from highly advantageous FFSCC systems, maximizing the specific impulse generated by a given amount of propellant. And while being the third FFSCC engine to ever be developed, it'll be the first to leave the test stand. One of Raptor's most impressive specs is its gimbling range, meaning the engine's able to gimbal 15 degrees on the Y and Z axis, which that's needed for the flip and burn landing that Starship intends to do. A gimbal range of 15 degrees is a lot. To put it in terms even I can understand, the RS-25 has a gimbling range of 12 and a half degrees, and SpaceX's Merlin, which powers the Falcon family of SpaceX rockets, only gimbals to five degrees on the first stage. Raptor 1, however, has been refined over the years. It is an older, obsolete design. Its construction was complex, difficult to manufacture. It had a long turnaround between launches. It also hit a thrust ceiling of 185 tons, meaning it would struggle to reach much demand for a Mars-bound Starship. The solution became Raptor 2, but after the first Starship orbital flight, Raptor 2 seems to maybe not be enough. So just three weeks after that, Musk surprisingly unveils Raptor 3. To be clear, Raptor 3 isn't just an updated Raptor 1 or 2, but it's an improved, more powerful rocket engine. It reached 350 bar of pressure, 269 tons of thrust. Generally, the higher chamber pressure, the more thrust and potentially more efficiency the engine will gain. Higher chamber pressures also let an engine be smaller for a given thrust level, which also improves their thrust to weight ratio. So let's compare it. For the predecessor, Raptor version 1 generated 185 tons of thrust and the current V2 about 230 tons of thrust. Raptor V2 only achieved about 300 bars of pressure, but that's an increase of almost 17%. In another comparison, the best Russian engine RD-180 generates 386 tons of sea level thrust, but has two combustion chambers and two nozzles. In other words, the Russian engine can be seen as one engine with two combustion chambers or as two engines that share one turbo pump. So let's imagine two Raptor 3 engines could fit in the size of one RD-180, definitely creating a much higher thrust. In its closest comparable engine, that's the Blue Origin BE-4, it's expected to produce up to 240 tons of thrust. It uses an efficient, albeit slightly less so, combustion cycle and relies on the same methane and oxygen propellant. When SpaceX put the Raptor 3 on the launch vehicle, Starship's Super Heavy Booster has 33 Raptors, so a total thrust of 8,877 tons, or 19.5 million pounds. The Saturn V rocket generated 34.5 million newtons, or 7.6 million pounds of thrust. The Starship Super Heavy Booster with Raptor 3s would have 2.56 times the thrust of the Saturn V. 
So far, Saturn V's no longer operational. NASA instead developed a new rocket called Space Launch System, SLS, and it generates a max thrust of 8.8 .8 million pounds. NASA says the operational rocket exerted more power than any rocket ever, and that was when it lifted off in November of 2022. SpaceX Starship Super Heavy is expected to dethrone the SLS as soon as it reaches orbit with its capability at liftoff. SpaceX officials recently said that they have more engines than they could fly now. Do you think SpaceX will be able to launch the Raptor 3 engine by the end of the year? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Now finally, what do all these changes on Raptor 3 add up to? Well, with more power, this will allow any Raptor 3 equipped vehicle to have a dramatically increased payload, but it doesn't stop there. Thanks to Raptor 3's simplicity, as Musk promised, it can be relaunched within an hour compared to Raptor 1, which took several weeks in between launches. This simplicity also means the Raptor 3 cost half as much to manufacture as the previous Raptor. To say this engine is groundbreaking, it's an understatement. The impact of this Raptor 3 will be immense. Let's look at Musk's ultimate goal, colonizing Mars. Thanks to the Raptor 2 quick turnaround, a small fleet of Raptor 3 equipped starships could launch several times a week. This means SpaceX could launch more payloads into space in a year than the U.S. has done in its entire history. This dramatic increase in annual payload capacity is what would enable SpaceX to colonize Mars. Musk estimates that a total of 1 million tons of payload is needed just to set up a self-sustaining Mars colony. In theory, Raptor 3 equipped starships could deliver this much to Mars in just 10 years with around 20 launches a week. That means it would take only approximately 1,000 or so Raptor 3 equipped starships working full time for a decade to colonize Mars. As you can imagine, it'll cost an awful lot, but that's where the Raptor 3 really shines. A Raptor 3 equipped Starship is estimated to cost only $2 million per launch. Compare that to NASA's SLS rocket, which has a 15% smaller payload than Starship and costs $1.55 billion to over $2 billion per launch. From some perspective, Musk's hypothetical 10-year Mars colonization project will cost $2.08 billion a year. And that's the same as one SLS launch. Or to put it another way, Starship is 1,040 times cheaper than the SLS. Just a reminder though, the SLS is no slouch. It is a cutting edge rocket designed by the very best at NASA. It's just that Starship and Raptor 2, they're just in another league. Starship really could unlock the moon, Mars, and the asteroid belt for further human exploration and colonization. With such an impressive payload, a tiny launch cost, and quick turnaround time, Starship could also significantly impact Earth. As the Raptor 3 can run off carbon-neutral biofuel, Starship could, in theory, be the world's first net-zero rocket. Combine that with its impressive landing ability, the low Earth orbit payload of over 150 tons, and you have a possible replacement for a commercial jet plane. It would take a Starship 29 minutes to go from London to New York and only double that of a regular first-class ticket per passenger. This service would be impractical with Raptor 1's long turnaround time, but with a Raptor 3 equipped Starship fleet, it could easily shuttle passengers to and fro without massive delay. So, thanks to the Raptor 3, SpaceX could revolutionize aviation as well. And that just about wraps up today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.